One is Ty Warner with Kissoff Tech Support, uh, Tyke Engineering. We're going to talk about how we analyze uh, a configuration that I'm showing here on the screen. So what I have is I've got power coming in through the center gear, and I'm splitting it between uh, each of those side gears. Okay, so you can see the power comes in the center, splits to the top, splits to the bottom, and then comes out. And the interesting thing here is each of these um, side shafts has is running at the same speed with a different torque. We're just going to assume that the gears are the same ratios. <clears throat> so the question is, how do we analyze this? Well, we'd set up our, our system like we normally do. On the input boundary condition, which is this in the center, then we have a left and a right output. And what we do is we, we define the speed coming in on this um, input boundary condition and we don't worry about the torque at this point we could do it the other ways as well and then on one of the outputs we define the torque in this case it's it's 200 newton meters okay we don't worry about the speed constraint and then on the other side we also define the torque and we don't worry about the speed constraint because it is what it is um, based on the on the ratio of the gears that we have so this torque is 175, this torque is 200. And you can see how it, the power flows up and down. And if I run the kinematic calculations, everything is good. In my user interface, I'm going to check my power levels to make sure that this torque is what it's supposed to be. In this case, it appears like it, it is. If I add 200 plus 175, it's 350 or 375 times 2 is 750 so this is my my split okay so I seems like it makes sense 109 plus 125 is 235 right here 0.62 and that makes sense it adds up I can run this calculation incidentally I'm just using a standard user interface um, I get my gear pair uh, flank and, and root safeties right in this method I can calculate the, the two side gears very easily, but I have to do a little bit more to do the center gear driving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the first gear pair. It's a 30, 60 is my driving gear, gear two, this is my, my driving center gear. Um, I have a face width. 20 and 25, a center distance, I, it's a simple easy calculation, and then I run the calculation. I didn't really change anything here. I can go in and I can optimize these, these uh, root radius coefficients to get the maximum radius. I get a full radius in here. Um, tolerances I left, and in the strength, all I'm doing here is I'm going to change this over to ISO. Okay, and I get these numbers. 1.4, 0 0.887, 0 0.912. So my, my flank safety is maybe a little bit low. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the second gear pair. The same. And I can see what my, my flank safeties are. I'm going to go to my strength. I'm at ISO already. My reference profile. I've optimized the root radius coefficient for a maximum fillet radius. My tolerances are the same and in my strength it's just ISO. Okay so I run this. I'm going to double check these these torques. That's 200. That makes sense because that's what it is in my right here. The first one should be 175 and it is. Okay. That's 350 for this one, and um, for the second one, it's 400. Well, those are two two numbers we got to make sure we understand: 350, and 400. Okay, that's the torque on the gear by the mesh. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save one of these calculations. I'm going to save this one. 
and I'm going to put it uh, in a folder here. I'm just going to put it in my video tutorials. I'm going to call it a split power pinion drive. Yeah, I know it already exists. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. I'm going to open up Kissoft. Okay. And then I'm going to open up my split power pinion drive. Okay. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a couple things. So first, first thing, I'm going to make that 8620. Check my road reference profiles there. I'm optimized for my root radius coefficient. So I want a maximum radius. My tolerances are still fine. Under my strength, if I go to required service life, you can see I have on that gear one, I've got two load cycles per revolution. Okay. Well, I'm going to change this to one. Okay. And I'm going to double the time from 20,000 to 40,000 hours. I'm going to go to factors. I'm going to change this application to 1.0. Leave everything else the same. So if you're if you're using, um, you know, this manufacturing deviations Annex E, you can keep that. I'm just going to use the calculation method for now. I go back to my strength. And now I'm going to define a uh, load spectrum. I'm going to add one. So it's going to be 50% and 50%. What I'm doing is I'm taking this 40,000 hours and I'm splitting it in half, 20,000 hours for each load that the gear is going to see. So I get the same number of cycles and I'm going to look at two different load cases. I'll just make it a torque. And instead of a factor, I'm going to make it a value. And I'm going to have 50% at 400 and 50% at 350. That's why I mentioned those two are important numbers. Because that's a torque at the, at the pinion, the driving pinion, the big gear, 60 tooth gear. When I run this, now oh, it's at nominal load. We've got to change this to load spectrum, and then we can run it. So now I run it. And now I can see that this particular gear, the first gear, is what I'm interested in. When I run this design with those two pinions, one on each side, driving at it, it looks like the root safety is high enough, and it looks like the flank safety is just not quite there. Um, at the number of cycles that we're talking about. And it could be that we have to widen that tooth. Um, we're not so worried about gear two here because that's really not what we're analyzing. Gear two is just kind of along for the ride. Gear one, that driving pinion is what we're interested in. And this way we can now, if we run the report, um, yep, that makes sense. That's not really a warning, it's just information. Uh, we have our, our load spectrum, our newton meter is a driving torque, load cycles, uh, load cycle gear 2. So gear 1 is 72 million cycles, looks like, or 72, uh, 7.2 billion, a lot. We'd have the same thing. This is basically the number of uh, contacts, you know, per tooth. If I were to run that design at 20,000 hours with two Two contacts per revolution would be the same number of, of uh, load cycles. And then we get our, our root safety and our flank safety. And if we go down in the report, we can look at micro damage as well right here. So it'll tell you that uh, the root service life is well, it says 2,400 hours. But that's because we have that low um, 0.96 or whatever 
or 0.8, whatever it is for the second year. And you can see it's right here, this H2. So at 40,000 hours, this one doesn't work, but at 2430, this one fails. So what we're, what we're looking at here is, is uh, the flank safety is the, the driving requirement for this particular pinion, okay? At 328%, we can't be over 100%. Um, so if I were to go back, and there's two things I can do. I can either I can either tell the calculation that limited per, pitting is permitted. So towards the end of the life, maybe the gear pits a little bit, and you can hear the noise. And if I do that, and I run it, 0 0.993, 0 0.934, not quite enough. So maybe I just bump this up to 25 millimeters too. And I'll call this 26 because I want, I'm really interested in what this has to be. If I run it again, 25 looks good. I run the report. Okay. I go down to my service life. And that second gear is still driving the design, but now I can make my $40,000. In fact, fifty-five thousand. Okay, so this is how you would this is how you'd analyze a single pinion driving two gears with the pinion in the middle. Okay, it's not necessarily intuitive, but when you do it in this method, let's save that. Um, you get good good results and good correlation. So you can use either Kiss Soft or you can use Kiss Sys. Or KISS Design. In this case, I started with KISS SIS, and I analyzed the two side gears, and then I just saved the gear calculation and analyzed the center gear, the, the driving pinion. And then I split that into two load bins, doubled the time, and then I, when I run that, the Palmgren Minor damage calculation is, is carried out, and now I'm looking at it at both of those load cases for the gear over the life of the, of the design. So 50% at one load, 50% at the other load. And when you combine them up, it equals the total load cycles in the, in the system. So uh, that's, how you would, that's how you would analyze something like this. You can do it with KISS Soft. You can do it with KISS Sys. You can do it with KISS Design. No matter how you look at it, you do need to pull that center gear, that driving pinion, and do a side calculation and verify that it lives. Okay. If you have questions, feel free to email ty.warner at kissoff.ag and I can help you with that. Otherwise, um, you know, have good success in your gear design. Uh, think about systems. Think about how things interact. In this case, uh, we got to think a little bit deeper about how we analyze the uh, driving pinion. Well, hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Thanks.